Perhaps you're an employee or in a professional position of leadership and you are leading and caring for your clients. Perhaps you're a leader and an entrepreneur and you are caring for and leading your clients. Therefore, it's very important that you understand the five types of clients. Now, how I define clients is someone that you do ongoing and consistent business with. A customer can be a one-time, one-off experience. A client is someone that you have ongoing relationships with. I want to share with you the positives, negatives, and how to meet the deepest need of the five types of clients. And the first type is the ghost. This is the client that you get, and all of a sudden they disappear. Now the positive is that you have free reign. You're not being bugged or bothered or uh, micromanaged, and you are doing what you want and what you need to do. The negative is you may have no concept if you're fulfilling the need, you just know you're not being micromanaged. What to do with the ghost is be able to check in regularly. Hey, how are things? How are you? What do you like about this? Is there anything you would fine tune? What do you see me and how do you see me meeting your deepest need next year? Putting that futuristic thinking out. Because what can often happen with the ghost is that they reach out next year and they cancel services. They were going in a different direction and it hits you like a Mack truck because not only were they ghosting you, but you were also ghosting them and coasting. Number two, you have the looper. The looper is the client that likes to be kept in the loop. They may check in often, and the positive is that they're engaged, they're motivated, and they're inspired, and that's a great client to have. The negative is, if this is not your language to speak with clients with, it can often come out as if they're bugging you, don't trust you, and you're constantly doing things outside of your desired time frame. Keeping the looper in the loop is a simple thing. If you are doing a project, reaching out once a week or at an agreed upon time, once quarterly, hey, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, that satisfies the looper because they are sitting somewhere wondering and worrying about what's going on, where they are, how their money is being spent, and you get to take initiative on that and be a leader. The next one is the library. Third person is the library. And it sounds like just what it is. All of the books behind me, they have all of this information. They know your craft just like you. They speak your same language. They know the same acronyms. They have a lot of knowledge on the same things that you do. And the positive is that you get to speak the same language. The negative is that this person, with all of their knowledge and experience, may refute a lot of your ideas may feel like they know more than you. And it can be very frustrating when you always feel like you have to prove yourself time and time again. Therefore, it's very important to sit down and have a conversation in the beginning and maybe throughout and be clear and concise about how you work, what they want to get out of your service, how you'll best provide them, but also maintaining a line in the expectation that you can work and will satisfy their problems with their consult, but not with always refuting and arguing. Therefore, leading is protecting your time, your mental space and mental peace, and also them as well. Number four is the pole vaulter. Now, this could be a difficult client to deal with. Some people will toe test over your line of expectations and boundaries. Others will run with a pole vault and fling themselves over your boundaries. So the pole vaulter, the positive is that they're motivated. They're always looking to do more. Therefore, you can always do more with this individual. The negative is that it's easy for them to take advantage because they're pole vaulting over your line. And in the beginning, you may go above and beyond like all great leaders want to do. But at what cost? Your mental peace, your income, your time. And great leaders know how to not only protect themselves, but also their business and their organization. And pole vaulters will take advantage of that. What we do with a pole vaulter is clear and concise. 
is great asking of questions. How do you expect me to do this for what we initially agreed to do? And then being quiet to hear the answer. Maybe being more upfront and saying, I would love to do this. However, we would have to talk about adding this and this to make it a win-win for both of us. If you don't protect you, if you don't protect the mission, you won't be leading for long and they will bounce out to pull vote over someone else's line. Lastly is the ideal client. Now I was in mental health therapy for 19 years before doing and getting to do what I do now, which is speaking, training, online, and all of that for organizations and teams. And what they call the ideal client in the mental health world is the Yavis client. Young, attractive, verbal, intellectual, and social. It's easy to sit down with someone like that and let the time pass by. Now, I don't think you need to be young and attractive to be an ideal client. Ideal client, by my definition, means that this is somebody that's easy to talk to, great to be social with, it's easy working with them. You speak the same language, have the same expectations, and on the same path. Now, the positive about this is that it's easy. The negative about this is that it's easy. And because it's easy, it may be easy for you as a leader to downplay their needs, to ignore certain things, to pass by, and now you're pole vaulting over their line of boundaries and expectations. This is the individual that will give you so much credit. This is the individual that will build your community, that will give you referrals. So it's important that as a leader, that you reach out to this person often. How are we doing with this? What do we need to fine tune? Where are we going? Just similarly as you did with the ghost. These are the five types of clients. Those are the positives, the negatives, and what to do about them. If you like this, you're gonna like everything at youevolvingnow.com. It's Y-O-U evolvingnow.com and I look forward to being of value and impact for you, your leaders, your organization, and your future. Guys, I will see you next time and until then, enjoy your evolution.